problem Larry's going to have if he gets elected. The problem all of these candidates are going to have if they get elected is they only have one vote. And they can't get a damn thing done with one vote or two votes. And that's the reality. And I think you're going to see as the years pass that not much is going to change. And maybe you remember uh, crazy Sloan up there telling you, well, maybe you should go charter. Take your school charter. Get the parents involved. Let them get their share of the money for the school that's required by law to be given to them. And you run your school the way it should be run. And get rid of the Kremlin. That's the school administration. That's what I call them, the Kremlin. Nikita. Them folks. Okay. Thank you. you know, schools and school finances are uh, a subject that everyone has an opinion on, uh, especially the school side of it. All of, us have, all of us have attended school. All of us have preconceived notions what a good school is. We all have preconceived notions, and most of these notions are based on our experience in school for 12 or 16 years. So these are, these are uh, guidelines that we keep in our mind. When we talk about financial situations in schools, people also, citizens, have these preconceived notions. Um, and the publicity that the Monroe County School District has received over the last four, five, six years um, has not been good, especially in the area of finances. What I would do, what I would attempt to do, and I would push hard if elected, I would avoid all budget cuts that directly affect the classroom, teaching, and or learning. I would advocate for additional state funds. There are districts in Florida that lobby pa Tallahassee very hard. They have their own firms that work up there just to influence the legislatures on additional state funds from the state taxes. Uh, sales tax. Um, I would push hard that human consequences are considered in every financial decision that the board makes. All financial decisions lie squarely on the shoulders of the board members, not on anybody else. They have oversight for any financial decisions that are made in the district. I would examine all line items that focus on non-related, uh, non-classroom related issues. These are expendable if you want to get rid of them. I would examine the cost of district insurance. I would probably ask for deductibles to be raised and reduce the coverage. We have, we have high insurance policies on buildings we're not even using in the Monroe County school system. I would try to restructure the legal, and I would examine the cost of litigation in the district. Uh, I agree with my colleagues about a three or five year plan, fiscal plan. And uh, also, I think this is very important because uh, I know uh, Dr. Murray has sat on the Audit and Finance Committee. In my experience at the district level, a lot of committees, oversight committees, were token committees. Uh, they were formed because the legislation deemed them necessary and advised the district to form them. I never saw an oversight committee recently in the Monroe County school system that actually had any real input. They weren't really listened to. They were fulfilling a need in the legislation. Um, and I'll, for the sake of brevity, I'll pass the mic. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Larry Murray said to me in a personal conversation maybe a week ago, he said, Mark, you know, your idea of, of instead of giving away Glen Archer, to take it, sell it, take the money, and buy capital assets that teachers can use in lieu of a portion of their salary was thinking outside the box uh, and he said it probably isn't going to be followed by the school board but they're not used to thinking outside the box. Well Larry's idea now to part, uh, portion off and sell the transient rental licenses out of, the, out of the Marathon Manor is thinking outside the box and I compliment Larry for that idea and uh, I've got some comments on it. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not in favor of it. I think that uh, it's certainly something that has to be looked into. Uh, in, my, in my 
business career as a lawyer, I used to represent several developers. Okay, when you're going to do something, what Larry's talking about, the proper way to do it is to turn it all into numbers. So what we would need to do is we need to get an appraisal of the property with those transient licenses, then an appraisal of the property without the transient licenses, and find out how much the property is going to go down in value when we sell the transient licenses. One issue to take into consideration is, is the property valuable at all without the licenses? I'm hoping that it is. The thing about the transient licenses being attached to that building is that makes that particular location ideal for someone who wants to put in a hotel. So maybe the appraisers would come back and say, look, uh, uh, it has more value attached to the property because it could be sold as a hotel at some point in the future. Uh, another appraiser may look at it and say, no, if we can get that money for the, we could have three million dollars for those transient licenses, we've got half of our money back, and we still have title to the property, like Larry said, so maybe we can make some other use of it, sell part of it, maybe uh, add part of it, the property to the uh, existing sports facilities at Marathon High School. But these are ideas that have to be considered. We have to take proper business, business steps in order to make these decisions. It's something that you just don't propose and vote on it and so forth. You have to have all the facts and figures going in. So uh, again, to, back to uh, Larry's example. It's a good idea. It deserves consideration. And it has to be done in a business-like manner. We need to get the appraisals done. We need to find out if it's feasible. And then we need to find out what uses we can make of that money if we decide to go ahead and parcel off and sell those transient rental licenses. And that's what we're talking about here with the school district. We're talking about planning. We're talking about making good financial decisions. Our school board, but um, I really don't want to do that. It's been a very long evening. And uh, instead, uh, I'd like to just take the opportunity to thank Larry for putting together this uh, forum. It's been terrific. It was very nice to come to the Big Pine area. Unfortunately, we don't have enough events in the Big Pine area to meet as many people as we like in the area. And uh, Mr. Becker for coming out and, and uh, moderating this for us. So again, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and giving us the time to listen. Uh, there are several more forums to come, and I'm sure we'll, we'll debate these issues and some others uh, here in the next week or so. Thank you. Well, you've seen the orchard now. You've seen all the cherries picked. It doesn't mean much for me, does it? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, my, my emphasis is going to be on planning. When I get on the school board, it's my hopes that we can start getting into planning, whether it's planning for Lynn Archer, planning for the Marathon Manor, or whether it's planning on, as Larry would, might suggest, zero-based budgeting. You know, we've wandered all over the place up here tonight. Not one of us has really hit on the one thing that the school district exists for, and that's to teach children. We don't have any other function except to teach. Everything else is an ancillary service. So if we're going to do planning, we have to start looking at these things and say, why am I in the busing business? Should somebody else do the busing for me, or can I do it better? That's zero-based budgeting. You start off by saying, my function, my only function, is educating children. What else do I need to do to support that function? Not what else am I doing? Again, I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. I've enjoyed this with all my colleagues. Uh, appreciate Bill Becker's input on this. Uh, have a good evening.